friends, welcome to a very special bonus episode of Game the Game. This is a talk back with the creator of Betrayal Legacy. And let me introduce our returning cast, James Katika, Xander Genere. Hello. Jay Africa. And Rob Davio. Hello. Oh <laughs> my goodness. All right, let me read some things about Rob. Uh, this is like my high school yearbook. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was on the swim team. You. Ooh. Oh, is that, you don't want me to read those? I, read those, I was yeah. gonna say, Hales from Massachusetts. Thank you for coming all the way out here. Uh, the creator and godfather, some say, of the genre of legacy board games. Yeah. You, uh, Risk Legacy was first. Risk Legacy was then first. Then Pandemic Legacy, and of course, Betrayal Legacy. Mm -hmm. right. You're also a guest lecturer at, at fancy schools. I have been a lecturer at fancy schools. I've been a visiting professor at Ooh. NYU and Hampshire College. I'm doing not as much teaching now, though. Amazing, yeah, but uh, lucky for those students that got you while they could. But now you're, now you're a busy man. Uh, Is it, was it mostly teaching game design or game theory? Game design. Okay. Game design, yeah. yeah. There was some people who I was like, I was literally their first class of their first day of school a couple years ago. Like Ooh. it was their first college class and like they're all wow. eager and ready to go. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry, you think the rest of college is gonna be this cool? Yeah. Yeah. Joke's on yeah. you, set the bar way too high. <laughs> all right, well, we are here to talk about how much fun we had with our playthrough of Betrayal Legacy. Yeah, spirit yeah. fingers, please, yes. <laughs> Let's respect the helm. Yeah. Yes. There's uh, a fresh one in there. Ooh. Ooh. Let's disrespect I suppose we out. should say now, this is gonna be a full spoiler episode, right? Oh, oh right. yes, we absolutely should say, we are going to ruin every detail, but we should also mention that someone else's playthrough could be completely different. So the things we talk about here, depending on whether or not you spoil the rest of them for us, could be completely different for someone else's playthrough. In fact, it will. We it will. It. Yeah, so what I will talk about is the main plot, which remains basically the same. Absolutely. No matter when you play through, but I will only talk about the haunts that you played. So if okay. someone else is playing and they find a different haunt, they won't know. And then there's some things that you didn't find or get to that I'll just not mention. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> On camera. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> okay, well, let's start from the beginning. So you created the genre of legacy. You were one of the writers on the original Betrayal at the House on the Hill, so naturally you were the choice to make this game. What was step one in the creative process? Um, panic, but like in a cool <laughs> way. <laughs> now, I worked on Betrayal at House on the Hill. The original game was by a guy named Dr. Bruce Glasgow. He's a professor. Mm. And it came and landed on my desk at Hasbro, and I spent about 18 months doing some design, some development, adding some haunts, tweaking things, and sort of making the game fit for what Hasbro wanted to publish then. Before it came out, it went to Avalon Hill with Wizards of the Coast, where another group sort of finished it up and did something. So there's like really a, a bunch of people who did it at the same time, but it always had a soft spot mm. in my heart um, where you could put a knife in, <laughs> just <laughs> oh, twist, twist it, it a little bit. I remember um, playing Betrayal for the first time and loving it because it brought in like the, the LARPing elements, the storytelling elements of like one person had to get away from the table and there was a whole book of secrets. I thought it was so cool and so I, different. Yeah, I was just a D&D &D nerd growing up. Right, right, yeah. So I was like, oh, let's just make like sort of a role-playing game in a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's one of the few games that I've worked on that I will not only play, but pull out to play. Hey, you want to play Betrayal? Yeah. People yeah, will play absolutely. like, hey, do you want to play? I'm like, I spent two years working on it. Yeah. <laughs> right? like, it's, it's a, it's, I'm very proud of it. Yeah. I will watch you play sure. but betrayal was a this is the one that you will pull out that you've worked on yeah. that's because there's still compliment. haunts that i haven't played yeah. wow. the original wow. game. right well I just run, haven't run across them mm. oh amazing all right so let's start talking about our playthrough and i'm sure many things will come out of that but it starts with the witch hunt right we're in 16 well it, it starts 90s? It's 1666, mm -hmm. 1666, right, yeah. for no reason in like particular. Like devil uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, see? Uh -huh. um, it actually starts about 600 years earlier oh, when right. the Vikings come. Oh, right. So we're trying to figure out what to do here. Um, we did uh, come up with the idea. When I say we, there was I was sort of the lead designer, but there was a various group of about four to six other people who came in and, out and did haunt writing and haunt testing and spreadsheet management and idea and card generation and, and all of this stuff. So, um, one of those jobs is not as fun as the other. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> spreadsheet I No, I, 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 I <laughs> disagree. Someone made flow charts of every chapter to make sure that it couldn't break and that we are telling oh, you God, to really? pull in the right cards mm -hmm. or destroy the right cards, which was invaluable for us to sure. check and make sure we hadn't broken anything. And the spreadsheet 
was a work of genius, which was the only thing that like make it work. This guy who just like making sure everything talked to each other, and the guy knew the spreadsheet and the game so well that we'd be like, so this card, and you go. No, in free play, it will break these three haunts if we make Whoa. that card that way. Like wow. everything was just in his head. The spreadsheet was just yeah. the manifestation of his brain. Wow. Sure. So I will say we a lot. Like I get to be here and do the fun stuff on TV. But there was a whole group of people who. Yeah, sure. Know, really oh, put yeah. It together. We understand that Rob is a conglomeration of people. <laughs> right. Yeah. We Rob are Rob. We are <laughs> manifested no, they don't somewhere want in the game. Yeah. <laughs> so there were many hands in this, but so we set out and we were like, well, what are we going to do? And the idea of telling the history of the original haunted house was something we settled on early on and we're like well, what do you do in a game where your character not only might die but probably should most of the time <laughs> Absolutely. that you're going to have two-thirds uh, like mortality rate in any given haunt mm. and then the idea came of different generations so we knew we wanted to tell a story over many generations and we just didn't know what that story was mm. and we went through the usual things of demons hell like possession, the exorcist, monsters oh. in the woods. Like we hit all, of, well, they're all good yeah. genres and this bo box is a box of tropes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, but the, the more outside the box, in yeah. the box tropes right. were the most interesting to us. Yeah, I think yeah. like creepy doll stuff, which is a trope, absolutely, sure. but not the first one you think of. Yeah. Uh, furniture yeah, coming to life. Yeah. 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 Coming to life, yeah. The murder yeah. mystery one was sort of my favorite one. Framing everybody in front of the inspector. Yeah, yeah. That was my favorite mm -hmm. one. Even taking something that we did know, like Frankenstein's monster, and turning that into a haunt too was super interesting uh, yeah. way to play. Yeah, some of this stuff like Frankenstein's monster, and the it, inspector one were ones that the hunt team just sort of came up I'm like, these yeah. are great. I did be our guest. Like, nice. Oh, love it. And I don't remember what the idea was, but I remember the rest of the team going, we're making a serious game here. And I'm great. like, I know, yeah. but, but I'm doing it anyway. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, every once in a while you break up the rhythm. It's yeah. like yeah. when you're doing a, you know, X-Files or some one of these things and everything's really serious and then you have the slightly quirky monster of the week story just yeah. to like keep it fresh every once in a while. Absolutely. And you um, still get that sense of threat anyway. Right. You know, the yeah. big things are coming after you. Right. And we, as I wanted to turn that scene from Beauty and the Beast into a horror. Mm. Like yeah. no genre was really what it was. Right. Yeah. Cartoon. <laughs> and the animated, yeah, and sure. I went back and I watched the video. Okay, there's an armoire. <laughs> yeah, right. And there's a stove. And I'm like taking down the name yeah. and all this stuff. But, yeah. Vikings. But Vikings. Vikings. And we're like, well, what happened before it's set somewhere in the new world i always thought it was somewhere in new england or or the northeast we don't really say but it's implied and yeah, it felt like that mm -hmm. and we were like well there wasn't there were people here but w what really happened and then someone remembered that like the vikings briefly came to that part of the world and then left yeah <laughs> <laughs> nah, <nothing. laughs> we'll tell the story of why the vikings came and more importantly why they left and we're like why did they do it and so the story we came up with is they have um an evil necromancer in their mix. And his name is Fenrir. Mm -hmm. And he goes by the wolf. Mm -hmm. And this, there is a Norse myth about Fenrir who is a wolf. And yes. we said this is the origin of that myth, but it's gotten corrupted over time that oh. he would be a god. Oh, okay. So what we know is the Viking myth of Fenrir is just a corruption of this real sort of evil black magic person. And they keep killing him and doing all the things you're supposed to do to get rid of a draugr. Uh -huh. He keeps coming back because he's really good at it. Like he is sort of, avoided all of their spells and put a, he's put a tattoo on his chest, which is based on a real thing called the Helm of Awe, or simply called the Helm. Uh -huh. And most people don't realize that the Helm is his flayed chest flesh. Well, Xander thought it was a ship. I thought it was part of the ship. Like well, the most helm. people do. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's a ship and it's a helm and it's a helm, or it's a helmet. And yeah, it's, right? and it's circular and you can turn it. And and, oh. Yeah, and, and I like the fact that it, most people don't realize that the thing that they're worshiping and chanting is a piece of flesh with tattoos that were taken off of. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I do that for all kinds of stars day in, day out. I'm not surprised at myself. <laughs> One of us licked it. Uh, it might have been me yeah. uh, disrespecting <laughs> at some point. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't look, trust I'm, it. I'm not judging. You're, and you're not supposed to judge. You're not supposed to trust it. Right. It's really mm -hmm. the whole thing that we try to set up. But you still use it. Absolutely. It is it just, we kept calling it the van of candy, like when we were talking. <laughs> <laughs> and it does. It At the beginning, and I know we're jumping Take around Take the candy. A don't bit, get in the van. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Is that it, it spits out good things. Like yeah. it, at the beginning yeah. of a game, it's like whoever's judge gets to heal. Whoever's judge. And you're like, mm -hmm. I want to get in judge on that. Judge sounds bad. Yeah, but, but, but it's giving out like traits, and I want in on it. And so then everyone gets on it and then it starts going you take damage mm -hmm. you reduce down to critical and you're like I don't like this anymore yeah did I don't know I feel like we were all ready to get in that van full of candy oh, for a long yeah. time yeah. No. we've we didn't even think oh this ritualistic thing that has us chant for it that was dropped off by a cult that you just 
defeated? Yeah. Did you yeah. not defeat it? I, can't I don't remember. remember. That one. They were like gathering right outside the house, right? It's well, then you had that card that always comes back, like someone in the past has tried to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's one, um, no matter w in chapter two, no matter which of the two haunts you play, where an evil cult, sh cult shows up. Yes. And they want to drop this thing off. And they drop off the helm. And you're like, wow, that evil cult that we just dealt with, they left this thing. Yeah. They must have not been so evil. They're not so yeah. evil. Yeah. This, yeah. And it's telling us to worship it. Cool. <laughs> Are we unusual in that we forgot that maybe we should be wary of the helm? No, everyone does. Everyone does. Yeah, yeah. That's does. part of the Because you read the back you. and it says, behold, and it does yeah. this funny thing that you get to come up with a group and, and everyone loves it. I had nothing to do with that ritual. Uh, it was one of the other people, like it just arrived and on, on my like laptop and I read it and I went, well, this is the heart of the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And we wanted a way for you, because the game has a lot of luck, we wanted a way for you to get re-rolls. Right. Mm. So that you couldn't lose the game from that one really weird roll. You roll seven dice and you get zero. Mm -hmm. You had yeah. one chance, but we wanted it to be something like once per game you could do it. And mm -hmm. we wanted it to be that you kept giving a piece of yourself to this thing that you shouldn't be worshiping. Oh. Yes. That your family was pledging fealty. Please let luck change, oh piece of flayed skin dropped <laughs> off by a yeah. cult that <laughs> I'm chanting with. And everyone's like, when you put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But everyone does it because yeah. the game says to. Yeah. Now, can you think of other interesting chants that you've come across? Because you've probably watched some playthroughs. I saw Go to Helm, which I like. Go, <laughs> go to Helm. Go to Helm. Go to Helm. Um, yeah. I've seen like, Ola Salima, I think I was saying, which is from the Flintstones. Oh. <laughs> I started saying it during development, and, oh, and people are like, Martian? why are you saying that? I'm like, I, I, yeah, it was a little the Martian. Great Kazoo. Yeah, the Great yeah. Kazoo, and Ola Salima, and like, or something. Yeah, something like that. And I like had to Google for an hour to figure out why. Because you're like why trying you to, kept saying why I kept saying it. It's from a show. It's from the Brady Bunch. It's from right. something. It's, it's caught in the 70s in my head. I can't. You're working with 12 and, uh, 20 year olds that yeah, and they're like, heard of it. Why is the old man talking like that? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so the Vikings had a problem. Uh, yes. yes. I keep trying, I keep interrupting myself. It's, it's weird. It's interrupting charming. You this guy, <laughs> thank you. Keep it on track, it's fine. Um, they're like, well, we can't kill him. So we're just going to go bring him to hell ourselves. And, mm -hmm. in, and in Norse mythology, there is, I can never say it, you know, can say Yggdrasil. It. Yggdrasil. Yes. The, the tree that goes through all the different realms. And if mm -hmm. you've seen Thor. Yggdrasil's the tree? It's a tree. The tree of life. The, the tree of tree. life, the world, the world tree, tree, and the roots go to all these different dimensions or realms and things like that. Oh, Yggdrasil. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Y y Yggdrasil. 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 Yeah. Yggdrasil. So they're like, well, let's go find a place. And if he won't stay in hell. We're just going to go physically put him in there and tie him up and then just put a cork on the bottle and then say it's not our problem. Mm. So they go across the ocean and they go to Iceland and there's nothing there and they go to Greenland and there's nothing there and then finally they find this spot and they go, oh, here's a spot. <laughs> <laughs> and they go down and they find an opening into the other worlds and they pass through all these different realms and they find hell and they bind him there and one guy, his name is Tyr and it's part of the myth but in our version he's just a guy and he loses a hand in the fighting and when Fenrir's there, he says like, okay, you know, you tied me down, you chained me, we have a curse. As long as I'm alive, you're alive. And he's like, whatever, buddy. <laughs> right? You're gonna die, you're gonna starve here. If I get to live like another 100 years before you die, like, mm -hmm. no big deal. Mm. They tie him down, they cut his helm off, and they like go back up to the real world and they put these giant like stones around to cap it. It's sort of the equivalent of nuclear waste buried, yeah, do not yeah. Move, yeah. right? Yeah, these yeah. rune stones, they carve runes like saying, don't open this. <laughs> just please, just for once, don't yeah. open the thing. Those are the rune stones, okay. <laughs> Those are the rune stones, but then something goes wrong. Uh -huh. There is a couple who are like, he's not that bad a guy. Like, he did cool stuff. Fenrir. Fenrir. Uh -huh. Fenrir yeah. was kind of cool. Maybe we treat him a little meanly. Like, he got stuff done. I mean, murdered people and stuff, but he was he a doer. Have you heard of sure, Machiavelli? Sure. Yeah. He was a yeah. So they're like, and it's pretty cool to be immortal. Like, yeah, it's a great he's party immortal. Trip. Maybe we'll be immortal. So they're just like, maybe we made the wrong decision mm. here. And they're like, so they take a chalice and they do a little blood sacrifice where the husband bleeds into the chalice and okay. pledges it and says, I'm as long as this chalice is around, like puts a bit of his soul into the chalice, and so that Fenrir will stay alive mm. until he finds a way to escape. And the wife drinks from it. And it's a real, like, human blood drinking. Yeah, that's the fake. Typical yeah. Friday, yeah. Yeah, this is, it's a horror story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and of can't course, control this. <laughs> and then she takes the helm and runs off, and he stays be behind and allows himself to be captured. And he's, <gasps> or killed. Uh -huh. He knows, like, he creates a distraction. And she leaves, they kill him, and they bury him. And they're like, well, the helm's missing, but he'll die anyway. Mm -hmm. 
and they leave. Mm -hmm. 600 years go by. Mm. Now Tyr keeps dying and keeps getting reborn. Ah, uh -huh. on the mortal plane. Like on the yeah. mortal plane. He just keeps getting, like it's basically the same soul keeps, and he usually doesn't remember mm -hmm. his life, but he's often drawn to try to get to this place. Sure. And he doesn't know why, and depending on where he's born, he can't get there. And the place is wherever the helm is? Wherever the house is, right? He's being drawn back to Fenrir in that opening. But what happens in those 600 years is, is largely off stage for us. Mm. Because one version of Tyr is a settler in the New World and decides to build a house and the place that just feels right. Ah, uh, no. Yeah. So he goes there and he says, hey look, it's already perfectly good stones we can move around to make a foundation. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. And starts pulling them down and doing it and then goes, at some point he realizes, uh-oh, and he remembers. Oh, everything. And he leaves a letter and it's a card in there that some of you found. There's a note, it's in the uh -huh. starting event cards. I shouldn't have moved the stones. Mm. I of all people know. Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Don't you hate it when your memory is jogged from that past yeah. life yeah. and yeah. we already yeah. screwed <coughs> all Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. <sighs> and and un so unleash the immortal being. He's got a family mm -hmm. and he tells his daughter what's about to happen. Uh -huh. And she's a little girl. Uh -huh. And then the next day, Fenrir's awake enough that he starts basically manifesting his influence up through hell into the world because he's got this chalice with right. a piece of his soul in yeah. it. And he causes someone to touch the chalice to become possessed and think there's a witch and that everyone's out to get him. And mm, this yeah. family starts killing each other. Right. Ma and Pa and William. The, the girl. The hammer, yeah. the <laughs> flint yeah. pistol. Yeah. Pistol. Yeah. pistol. Ma went crazy and killed Pa, I think it says. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the girl who knew this was coming basically wills herself to hide with like a capital H and oh. slips in between the realms and oh. gets stuck. Oh, and That's that is the girl in the story. That we in the radio. And the girl on the front. Box. She's on the radio yeah. and she's the one who writes texts. Mm. Oh, oh, that was a, oh, fantastic! If you look, it's a little faint in the book, mm. and if we do a reprint, you'll be a little dark at the end of the last of the. Witch hunt chapter. It says, "Well, the house is mine now. I buried the bodies." There's. It says her writing. It says, "I am hiding," mm. like at the end. Oh. And it's like a little in the gutter, and people are usually so excited that they yeah. miss it, so most yeah, people don't see it. And then you just see her, and she's on cards, and yeah. she mentioned yeah. like I looked in the mirror, and I thought I saw her. She can't get out. She hid so well, she's stuck. Ah. Oh. But if very... she did, she'd probably die since she's not. No, she gets out at the end. She's the girl. Painting, we'll get there. We'll get there. She'll get there. Yeah. So that's when. The game starts. Right. They said, "Oh, a family died over the winter. Uh, some say from the pox." And it's like, um, "No, nope, maybe we cut that out. I can't remember if we said there's a pox, but anyway." Um, and it says the girl's body was never found, carried off by wolves. They say. Uh -huh. yeah. Ah, Fenrir. indeed it was. Yeah. So we start with the witch hunt, and that's our prologue. Yep. And that uh, that messed us up. Spoiler. That, yeah. yeah. There, there is no, no traitor. Oh, yeah, there is. Yeah, there is no. Well, you're all traitors. You're no traitors. That's when we we're starting to be like, as soon as someone touches the chalice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he's got a little piece of him. He's like, this is good because all the hate and blood feeds him, and it's waking him up slowly, yeah. by like little bit by bit. Yeah. Uh, did that. And each time he gets a little stronger, he puts another piece of him into another item, which we call omens, that oh. causes people to go crazy when yep. they find him. So the next thing he does mm -hmm. is he finds a brooch. Right. And this yeah. brooch was buried on his Viking buddy who was killed, who you met as a berserker spirit. Yes. And I was in the Xander was inhabited. Yeah. The, yes, you were a little girl. I was a little girl. Little girl. And you yeah. put it on, and now Fenrir yeah. woke up his, yeah. his last ally yeah. and caused him to do it. And that's when people go, Vikings? Wait, what? Yeah, yeah. Why yeah, is there yeah, a Viking right. in North America? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Even seeing the runes, yeah, in some of the, the backstory stuff, it felt like Norwegian. <laughs> it yeah. felt yeah. very Viking. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So that was our first haunt, obvious. Uh, second haunt. Right. Xander goes. Um, okay. So let's keep going on. Maybe you can tell us some Easter eggs, some things. I know oh. that this is the place where it starts to diverge because some of the people that also work in this building did their own playthrough, and they had very little overlap with the things we experienced. With the haunts. Yeah. yeah. Which and then depending on which haunt you find, you get different cards in the event deck. 
so and you might get snowball. different tiles. So it yeah. sort of snowballs that you're going to have this story of Fenrir trying to wake up and escape hell, mm -hmm. but all the details that you get in between. Mm -hmm. All relying so heavily mm -hmm. on that spreadsheet. Yes, yeah, the spreadsheet. Yeah. Yeah. So when we were designing this, we wanted to make sure Betrayal at House on the Hill has a lot of um, wobbly bits. Sure. And so does a legacy game. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure, like if you play a Betrayal and you, you get like a little bit in and it doesn't work, you're like, yeah, we'll play again, that happens. But if it's your chapter two, that's rough. kind of bad. So at the beginning we had like the prologue is everyone gets the same one. And then chapter one and chapter two and chapter three, there's one of two. Uh, and it gave us more control. And the nice. house is smaller mm -hmm. and there's fewer items and yeah. there's fewer omens. So we could play those endlessly on these uh, smaller boards yeah. to make sure that those first experience, four experiences. And then we tried to teach you the mechanics mm -hmm. that you were going to later need on. for later haunts. Yeah. So that as the haunts get more complicated, you have been trained on the earlier ones to go and you know there's not many firearms there's not real line of sight rules right mm -hmm. yeah we tried to go that way and like the things that you can't name like Moz, yeah you know flintlock pistol are the things that can break right right yes if it could break you can't name it because you're like oh i heirloom it and then it breaks on your next roll right mm -hmm. oh one of my favorite moments in play testing was the witch hunts going down and everyone's <laughs> like i'll teach you and someone goes into a room and finds the pistol <laughs> and then turns around and says like, take that and fires a pistol and rolls double zeros and it blows up in their face and they die. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah, or makes a speed roll and just blanks the whole thing and they had one hit point. Like the person yeah. chased them in and like, now, the t now oh, look God. who's yeah, yeah. laughing. Oh, Backfires the on them. Yeah. <laughs> But what a beautiful, dramatic moment. Yeah. Which I feel yeah. that this game was so full of. Yes. Yeah. It, it just mm -hmm. seemed so meant to be that Jay would always be the traitor. <laughs> Weird. I don't know how yeah, that you know, go figure. I don't know either. Is is that a thing that tends to happen? That one person, I guess that's just statistics, they're just random, that Jay would so often be the traitor? I believe seven out of our 14. Four no, it's a little bit of, of random chance yeah. more than anything else. I mean, early on, we looked at how the traitors triggered again in those first three. Okay, so it's the strongest person. It's the, so depending on which family you're playing, it won't be the red family three times in a row, right, but right. sometimes you can't help it. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes it's the, so each omen in the game has a flavor and the haunts that go with it have a flavor. Right. Like you're done, but there's free play. So there is yeah. mm -hmm. at least one, there's one or two haunts that use that omen that you just aren't even in the mm -hmm. campaign. So there's two brooch ones. I that you see. get in the campaign, and then two more that you get in free play. And so there's a total of four that, that go for each one, roughly. Um, and so the brooch is always the person who finds it gets possessed with some great indignant anger. Uh huh. And that's like all. So all four of those have to do with blood rage. Right. Yeah. So with that, you mentioned with these omens, too, we would, we would find an omen and give it its true name, mm -hmm. which was ours was the brooch of rage. Were there other options for that? Yeah, that was a way for, so it's interesting. I love giving people the ability to name things. Yeah, and, we had a blast. Right, <laughs> so what you name in the game makes it feel like it's yours. Yeah. Mm. But some people blank on names. So if you have to name everything, you just name nothing. Or you write down the most puerile sex joke you can think of. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Which Very is fine. Good. That's exactly well, yeah. what people do. So originally you, people would write the event cards that they got at the end and the idea was that they would make it off something that happened in that game. Like you got the event sure. card and you know, and you would call it like Lazarus's last stand and it would mm -hmm. create this moment. But what I realized is everyone was making dick jokes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you'd find it later and it would break whatever little bit of horror we were trying yeah. to do yeah. there. Yeah. And it was the same thing for the omens. And because the omens and the events were trying to somewhat keep a mood, yeah. we kept the naming to ourselves on that. So the omens, basically, you get either A or B or then later A, B or C. And it's a shorthand way um, to, if I look at a list of your omens, I know exactly which haunts you play. Yeah. Oh, yes. that's so cool. It's, it's you an don't identifier. Have to, yeah, you don't have to say, well, I played the, oh, you have Brocha Rage, you played the Berserker. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I love that, that yeah. you you take, it's fun for us to get to write on a card, yeah. but you can't give us too much control or we will make a penis joke. Right, yeah. 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 that's basically what it is, is it yeah. people's that's families. Yeah. 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 And, and I noticed that it, it was, I mean, it's very easy to make this cartoony. Sure. I mean, it's a board game. Yeah. I, mean, I think occasionally people play and go, ooh, but very few people are like, won't sleep at night after playing it. I'd oh, please, yeah. if that happened, thank you. I really, it makes me proud. <laughs> um, but I at least I'm trying to do a little bit of gothic horror, even if it's, you know, 
yeah. comic yeah. booky. I definitely got chills at certain points yeah. as mm -hmm. someone was reading flavor text aloud in a, a spooky voice, and especially watching some of our playthrough again when you had when you have the right music. Yeah, the music yeah. was great. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, not to say that we added anything. It, it's, it's perfect on its own. Yeah, fantastically written. But, yeah. but allowing yourselves to be transported is is something that this game definitely does and that I, I felt spooked at many points. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. It, it feels a lot less pulpy than the original Betrayal on the House on the Hill. Yeah, so that was the thing, is the original Betrayal on the House on the Hill was, was playing a lot of, uh, off a lot of tropes of the monster movies of the mm -hmm. 50s and 60s, yeah. some of which were campy. Mm -hmm. So some were serious, but most of them were campy and like, the expansion, you know, has things like the monster mash where all these monsters are dancing and they just right. kind of play off, I was a teenage, <laughs> Lycanthrope, I think, is yeah. one of them. <laughs> um, what we did on this, since we were going through time, is we said, well, let's do, let's do the sort of ghost stories of the time and place. And we, we drew a yeah. upon like um, folklore and literature of that time period rather than movies that came later. It's such a good concept. And yeah. uh, when, we we when caught that. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Xander was yeah. the first one yeah, to yeah. catch it. That Frankenstein and it was right. in Mary Shelley's book. lifetime right. that we yeah. came across Victor and his monster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So did that come on when you were like talking, starting to talk to people about this idea that you had, like, because the North mythology, like starting off from there, and then were you like, and then, or was that something that came through collaboratively? Like That actually happened earlier. Once we realized yeah. we were going to do Generations, we were like, oh, and what are the haunts going to be about? And there was like a team of haunts. So let's do haunts that fit the time and place. Because yeah. what you were playing when you were in the um, sanitarium mm -hmm. were the same tiles and cards that you had been playing by and large with, except for like, three generations earlier when it was supposed to be like 1840, mm -hmm. but I wanted it to feel different. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it did. And, and so like with the, the tiles we would add would definitely move it forward in time. And radio. Like, and then like radios and stuff. But for example, the floorboards in the earlier tiles are wide wood. And then when you get to like the late 1800s, they go to narrow wood. What? Wood. I did that. Yeah. I did not. It's and the light, lights on the wall can either be candles or lanterns because yeah. they had to survive across Whoa. all different time. Yeah. Like everything somehow had to sort of make sense in 1666 and a challenge. 2004. Yeah, so it was yeah. interesting to do. There's one that's in there that no one will ever see is if you find the um, gallery. Uh huh. There is, um, which you can go down to the ballroom from. It's like the original game has it. There is like a broken railing and a chair and a woman's shoe. Uh -huh. And if you look in the ballroom, there is a broken railing and a, a woman's shoe. Like there's uh -huh. one shoe is up top and one is. <laughs> someone has gotten oh, someone, really? got, someone got pushed off. Like the house yeah. has wow. a story between chapters where wow. stuff happened. And if you find both of those and look, you realize someone got in a scuffle and got pushed through the railing and one of her shoes fell off there and then like the other one was down below. What? How specific was the design team with the artist team, uh, or I don't know how many, if there was multiple artists, um, with things like that? Because I remember when we cover up the path to the basement, there was a sticker that we put right. on the mm -hmm. stairs tile yep. that just so perfectly lined up of you see the boards and it was very satisfying <laughs> to place it exactly over the stairs. Touches like that, that, that seamlessly incorporate the art and the, the game design are brilliant. Yeah, there's a person who's um, credit in there a secret weapon. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's Lindsay Davio, my wife, who is a production artist Aww. and graphic designer and hardcore gamer nerd. <laughs> and so she would be the one to articulate. I'm like, I want, and then she wrote up the like briefs to send to the illustrator. We we kind of drove the illustrator and the art team at Wizards oh. of the Coast a little crazy. That's like sure. when we got to be like demanding artists. Sure. Like, no, oh, there has yeah. to be another shoot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we did sort of <laughs> pick and choose our battles so this game would eventually come out. Like we can only redraw, you know, the yeah. musk eggs so many times <laughs> before you have to decide it's okay. Right, so, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the like the hard ones were the inside outside rooms, mm -hmm. which I'm, I still think we got most of it like a stable. Right. So like right. this has to look like either it's outside with a wall, <laughs> right, right, or inside and oh. it's a room, mm -hmm. and the floor has to look like it could be like a dirt floor, yeah. so it could be inside or outside. Like, I, I didn't like that the outside didn't have any rooms that were inside. It would felt too sectioned, mm. whereas everything else would be, you know, like this could be, you know, basement or first floor. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so like those were a little tricky to get right. Yeah, but no, each one had like this paragraph and a half. And I remember the one for the nursery, which I still like can be either on the second floor, mm -hmm. the upper floors, or the basement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says, the nursery contains a crib in the corner at a weird angle and absolutely nothing else of yeah. any warmth or value or place to sit. It's like, Ugh. And, I, and like I wrote that and I was like, 
I yeah. feel dirty. Oh gosh. Who well, would put this nursery in the, the basement? basement? And then have just the crib, like that right. you would put the child in and then leave. leave. Then, yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like what was wrong yes, with this child that was in here? Theory? I have oh, no God. idea. What? And the soundproof room. Oh right. With oh, all the yeah. mattresses. That was fun. And, yeah, that's, that's and the a whisper. fun interactive yeah. element. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. that came out of how much people were reacting to the haunt. Oh. Uh, not the haunt, the helm. Oh. And doing the chant, like we need more Take yes, it off the larpy bridge. role sure. playing, like, oh, you can only yeah. whisper here. <laughs> right. right, like all these little things to help people treat it a little more like a role playing game. And you know, you don't have to whisper and you don't have to do it, but it's if fun. You do it, it it's, feels like. Yeah, yeah. it's immersive. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's immersive. So we went back and tried to put a few more of those without it becoming a box of gimmicks. Right. Sure, but the perfect amount. It uh, was. Let's talk about immersiveness. And I think the calling cards you said had oh. something to do. Those you've added in to give people more of a sense of character ownership? Yeah, uh, that actually is in chapter one, you oh. get callings. You don't get one for the witch hunt. Mm -hmm. Oh, right, yeah. Just to show, yeah. you just show up and basically just a murder scene yeah. <laughs> breaks out. <laughs> and um, usually the person, I'll watch it, I've watched the witch hunt like 40 or 50 times and play testing and demoing the game and I'm like, whoever finds either the hammer or the gun wins. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's supposed yeah. to be like this little 20 minute thing and then almost the credits go up. Like right. the Freya Legacy, cold like that was the, the prologue. Opening, right? yeah. It's a cold opening to the thing. Um, so we noticed when people were playing that they weren't really bonding with their characters, even though we gave you a family. We had, we played around with families getting quirks, like right. this family's touched by madness or demon blood and all these things. But what happened is some families became incredibly unfun to play mm. and sure. some became broken. And the whole point was when this game was done, you needed a game that just you can play as a normal game. Right. So eventually we realized that the house is the main character and you are just an infestation within it. So it's the house yeah. that's changing as you were going. But then people didn't really have anything to hang their role-playing hats on. Mm. You're like, oh, how many 1692 tropes do I know? Yeah, right? like, yeah. It's like, I churn butter, and then you're like, out. Yeah, and, 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 right. that's it. and yeah, I was thinking- Yeah, James has the move, Dan, though. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> we'll talk later. And, uh, <laughs> and I was thinking, we were like thinking, why isn't this working? We thought of the original game, we realized, oh, there's a, a priest and a professor and a cheerleader and the jock and the little kid who likes bugs go, you know, into the house. You're like, oh, And you oh, flip they... them upside down and you get five more. And right, exactly. and you had like this little, you just had a box of tropes. Yeah. And uh, so the callings came in as a way for you to say, like the powers were there because they helped you play or gave you this, this moment. Um, but it was a way of saying like, I've seen things in the war. Yeah. Or you could be like, I'm a man of the cloth. And, right? and you just had like a yeah. catchphrase then. Yeah, yeah. And you knew how to play the moment, right? It was super helpful. And, and, yeah. Speaking of men of the cloth, Xander, yeah. do you want to elaborate a little on what it was like to portray <laughs> Lazarus? Well, uh, portray, not betray. <laughs> uh, a little bit of both. A little bit well, of We both. should mention, if anybody forgot or is just watching this video without our playthrough because they're crazy, yeah. you played Lazarus and he kept not dying. He kept on surviving. So we would, we would progress their ages based on the number of years that had passed because math. Yeah. And Lazarus lived to like 215 or 215, something? 215, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which was, we, we all, uh, at least in my head, I attribute it to like the house is magic and, and something's wrong and so a person shouldn't live this long at this time. But it was it was fun to bring back because I think it's the same thing as what you're trying to achieve with the family dynamic of whenever we would come in with a new character, we would kind of explain like, oh, I'm this person's aunt or I'm this person's son coming back to revenge Revengeance. or whatever. Yeah. And and playing a character that's just seen it all. <laughs> yeah. It was a lot of fun. And I feel like that was a rare experience, but I don't know if how You've rare heard anything. is that? It's not as rare as I expected. Okay. It's one thing that I just said, like, it was always like, oh, make a new character. And then right. people were playing, they're like, well, what if my character lived? I'm like, well, just age him up. Yeah. And then I assumed one of two things would happen. They would just naturally go, wow, well, he's like 104, so I'm just going to mm -hmm. say he died in his sleep. Yeah. Right. Or they oh. wouldn't get there. Yeah. Both of which were very, very wrong assumptions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, there was, in, in every group, there was someone who just starts living way beyond their yeah. means, and they're like, how long can this streak go? Yeah. And they refuse yeah. to retire them. Yeah. And they all say like, yeah, house is messed up, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's 180, what are you gonna do about it? Yeah. And we so- were, it, We were all rooting for you. Yeah. No. yeah, yeah. Well, right off the bat, I think it was his first incarnation. He was like up against all of these odds and kept rolling amazing physical rolls. So he's just this kung fu monk that was yeah. like, I'm yeah, sticking yeah. with Lazarus. <laughs> against all odds, you defeated a monster that was very overpowered. Yeah, uh, yeah. Which chapter two, probably the first of Jay's many wins. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think I won a whole lot. 
I think I was. You're just the traitor, traitor a bunch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Actually, we got a big difference. Was James, that time, that was the crucifix of rituals. Uh -huh. Does that mean anything to you? I'd have to look. <laughs> <laughs> sure, 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 sure. There's many cards, many omens, yeah. many pants. Yeah. I thought I had this all memorized before I sat down. <laughs> we can start. Again. You. We're not a. Oh, you want to do it? Yeah, let's do. Want to do free play? <laughs> uh, Jay, what was your experience like of? Being the traitor then. Being the traitor? <laughs> oh my lord. Um, <laughs> you know, when, when, when we first started playing, I was really nervous about it. Yeah. But but being the traitor, you, you end up just having free reign to do whatever you want. Mm. You know, it's sort of part of it. And I didn't necessarily... I tried to make the interesting choices for the game and not necessarily the most winning, obvious choices. Just I love that you did that. You can see Becca salivating, be like, tell me what it's I like know, to be to the traitor. I know, to be a traitor. I very much want to be the traitor. I find it very fun. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway. Like yeah. No, that's GM. right. But, but, but no, it was, it was great. It was great. I thought, I thought um, it's interesting because I felt like, I mean, I'd played Betrayal at House on the Hill, you know, several times before the original set, and I thought the 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 haunts in this gave the traitor much more interesting things to do mm. mm -hmm. overall. And also, I thought overall, I just I liked the unity of the the, the tone of the game, mm. where it is much more. It feels more narratively driven instead of the pulpy episode of the week mm -hmm. sort yeah. of thing. Yes. Building to well, yeah, yeah. having your, the grounding story of Finrear. Yeah, is exactly. We're that. sort of building lore as we play, and we would see the same omens and the items. Yeah, and the right. and yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it little felt crossbow. yeah, little crossbow. yeah, exactly. And you know, you have relationships so. between the families and such, and 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 it felt interesting because then all of a sudden, I wasn't just the traitor for the one game. It was a recurring thing. Yeah, yeah. I was like, like that family. Here we go again. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, the Reinhardt the family Reinhardt. is the Reinhardts. Yeah. yeah, you were messed yeah. up. Well, that's what humans like to create stories or patterns out of meaningless mm -hmm. data. So if we just <laughs> give you like the same cards coming up like three times, it was the top card. You know, yeah, three yeah. games in a row. <gasps> right, You're right. gonna write a story about that card, yeah. Yeah. like just because you want to, because right, you know, it helps explain it. Yeah. Well, and that's why I also selected a character from the original Betrayal Box. What do you oh. mean, Father Reinhardt? I would, that's why I oh, said yeah, he's the name Reinhardt. Oh. Right, yeah. yeah. There you go. I he's was like, oh, the blue character, wait a minute, who was it, who was it? Oh, it was, yeah. Wow, there you go. What a pull. <laughs> <laughs> Deep pull. All right, uh, so Mary the Hungy Doll, as we called her. <laughs> yeah, I, we weren't allowed to give her a name, right? But we did anyway. Oh, no, we everyone did. really gives okay. her a name. Yeah, the yeah. One, I have a group that's playing uh -huh. that every time someone draws that omen in a different game, they just write the word mama. <laughs> on the card, so it has like in different handwritings, Mama. Mama oh no! In it. Yeah, that, I, right. they sent me a picture oh. of the card, and I'm like, you out creeped me. Like, yeah. yeah. So, so, but also explain the soft eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I want to explain two things: the flavor text on the crucifix. Uh -huh. It says deadly sharp. You can tell it is killed before. Uh -huh. The crucifix in an earlier version was an arrowhead, and we forgot to change the flavor text. Oh. And then we laughed so hard <laughs> in playtesting. <laughs> That we just left it, yeah, which is yeah. why it says oh. that. We never thought twice so that. Ominous. Yeah, I so thought, it's so it's ominous. It's like, oh, it's a crucifix. Oh, it's sharp. You can tell it's killed before. You're like, what? What? <laughs> and it's just like someone was playing a playtest. They're like, why does it say this? And I just couldn't stop laughing. I'm like, that is staying in. Yeah. Because I never would have thought to write that. No. So my friend has this wonderful ability to tell a joke that when he tells a joke, you feel like, you miss, like it causes more questions, but it makes it even funnier, <laughs> right? Like someone once said to him, it's like, oh, hey, can I deflate your air mattress? It's, you know, we're like out somewhere, like at an Airbnb. He goes, no, you can't, and you know exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you're like, wait, what? And you're trying to think of the story. So, I didn't yeah. even, why would you think what I, I right? no. it, it like, so you just like, it becomes this moment where you're trying to find the story that led to that. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, wow. we had talked about that right when we were writing this. And so it's something I picked up in the writing of like, you know, the, the ceramic porcelain doll, its eyes are oddly soft. Yeah. It's one of my favorite things, it's, why did you touch them? What's the right, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, what's How the right amount of soft? Yeah. Is there an appropriate amount of soft? Yeah. yeah. And it's like, did you touch him again to confirm it? Like, all I wanted was this exact thing. I wanted yeah, the yeah. question of, what the hell does that mean? Hey, touch right? these eyes. Dolls have very think, hard yeah, eyes. Yeah. So like that's these should be like soft. these are oddly soft, right? Yeah, like is, is awfully. They're like tons of shit. Like why would in porcelain? When you like, picked up a when yeah, you picked up a doll, you're like put your fingers <laughs> in the yeah. eyes, right? Like nothing about it check. actually led to any logical behavior whatsoever. Oh, gotcha. um, but but it's it's funny because it's like wait it was soft eyes. But if you picture finding a porcelain doll and. As someone with dolls as a child, they have hard eyes. You're right. And like, if you lead them back, their eyelids close. Right, right. So if their eyes are soft, it makes me think, those are real living eyes in right. this porcelain doll, that creepy. there's a soul yeah, trap. That, yeah. Yeah. that was the whole thing is, it, it, 
this whole conversation was exactly what I wanted in different places in the game when you find something mm. and you go, wait, what? Why? <laughs> like there's an event card, it's a crawl space. I think it, you always get it. Um, if not, I'm doing a marginal sport. Like it just talks about the things you find in this crawl space in the basement. Uh, and it's like, oh, you find a razor blade. Oh yeah. And then did. you find like a bag of teeth or something. Yeah, and you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wait, oh, did yeah, we someone find a bag of teeth? And yeah. it's like sure. someone collected teeth, put them in a bag, and then, and then hid here. <laughs> and you're like, why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why? Right? Like what happened that led to these series? You have of to events? leave your house. Yeah. You can take yeah. one thing. Yeah. Let my me bag grab of teeth. my bag of teeth. <laughs> yeah. And I'm taking the razor blade to protect myself right. in case somebody in case comes. Or was the razor blade to get the teeth out? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Were they your own teeth yeah. that you had removed? Yeah. You're making it worse. Right. <laughs> and it was so funny. My wife who would I'd have headphones and I'd be on a thing and I'm like, yeah, it's a bag of teeth, and she's like, what? <laughs> and she's like, you know, if people only know you from your writing, they're <laughs> never going to ever want to be like having a conversation okay, yeah. with you. And it's just me like going, it's almost like a diagram. I'm like, what's weird? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Body mutilation's weird. Uh, teeth, no one likes, I mean, teeth are sort of cool. You put them under a pillow, but they're a little creepy because they're bones. And I'm like, keeping, keeping teeth's weird. <laughs> right? I just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was like a little formula of you weird. Just turn on an episode of Hoarders and go, that's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Was there any creepy little things that, that fell by the wayside or that didn't, didn't make it into here that were just either, either too weird or just like, well, that doesn't, you know, we don't have room, we don't have room for all that creep. Um, <laughs> the only thing we tried really hard to do is we always wanted to do horror, but not horrific. So we never actually did um, real violence to children mm -hmm. or violence against women. The closest we get is the wedding veil where it says the wedding was canceled or her body was found and like there was murder, but it's like sort of off stage mm -hmm. yeah. and sort of yeah. Victorian Edgar Allan Poe is what we were going for. Mm -hmm. We didn't sure. want anything that would make people feel like, hey, you know, this happened to me right. yeah. or my family and now I'm uncomfortable because it's like the saw or too something. Close. So yeah. Too close. So we always tried to yeah. make it like, Suspense, not horror. This is, yeah, this horror. is weird. Yeah. And therefore, it's not really going to happen in the real world. Mm -hmm. We're about the only governors we put on. Mm -hmm. It's great that you're, you had that conversation and that awareness, though. Is that something that you see happening more and more, like, in game design in general? Of people being aware of, like, maybe we shouldn't be putting this into games, even though it's yeah. horror. I hope so. I think it's just, like, the, the, the world in general. Yeah. I mean, I'm a middle-aged, straight, white guy. Like, I've been playing my life on easy mode, sure. right? <laughs> without knowing it. And yeah. so I'm just trying to be like, well, okay, just because it's funny or interesting to me, maybe right. I need to just broaden it. And so we had other you know, people on the team mm. and we're trying to get just people on the team who'll be like, eh, no, this isn't that good. Great. Yeah. And yeah. you go, oh, okay. Tell me when we trigger you. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll and, and, something and, with softer eyes. Yeah. Yeah. And let the players sort of fill in their own details too. Let, let, yeah. let what they believe in and what they know influence or, right. or our, our goal is to be themselves. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Poe left so much to our imagination. <laughs> it definitely has elements of that yeah. type yeah. of yeah. horror. That, yeah. Yeah. Let the imagination go wild. Let you build your own horror. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, instead of just giving it all in that box. Well, that's the thing in general is we're giving you the pieces and the tropes yeah. to put it together. And everything I just said about, like, at the beginning about, you know, Fenrir and being buried, like, you'll never learn all of that, that's right. the backstory that we use because yeah. it takes away the horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, and then this happened, and then this you happened, know it all. and it has 53 hit points, and you do this, and <laughs> right. it's got immunity to silver. <laughs> and like, once you learn all that, you're like, then it's just something to defeat. Right. But as long as it has some mystery. So even when you get to the end, we're hoping everyone kind of knew what happened, but not all yeah. the details. And I say things now like, oh, there was that letter about right. moving the stones, and you're like, oh yeah, right. Yeah. Like, now we just have to play through yeah. again. Oh dang. Yeah. It the felt satisfying. Like, I, don't, I know that I didn't have all the pieces, but I knew that there were pieces there, and the, the ending, for me at least, felt very satisfying. Yeah, and you were our keeper of lore. I think you, oh, really? you, <laughs> you chronologued, captured? Chronicled. Yeah. Sure. Chronicled, yeah, okay. you. Chronicled it very well, uh, because you have the knowledge of Norse mythology, but without oh, sure. it, I was like, mm -hmm. ooh, creepy wolf man. Okay, right. yeah. I'm scared. Yeah. 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 You know, I, I do remember something that cut, got cut. We were talking about the ending. We were going to put, the original idea for the ending was that you would kill or fail to kill Fender. Mm. And if you didn't kill him, he would come up and say to the traitor, like, hey, I'm gonna go out in the world and cause all sorts of devastation. I'm gonna lay low for a while. Um, and he cuts off his own finger and gives it to him. And he's like, you can summon me with this. Or if anything goes wrong, you can regrow me. Like, I trust uh, you, you were on yeah. my side. If you kill him, you would have been like, you killed him and his body turned to ash except for a finger and you don't know if he'll regrow. So one of you pledges to keep it, and then it would have told you to open one more box, and there would have been a fake severed <laughs> finger in there. Oh. With, oh. with no explanation, yeah. like, wait, what do we do with it? Yeah. What do we, 
like what are what are we is the game still going? Yeah, is yeah. it a real yeah. finger? <laughs> Oh! Wow. <laughs> Made out of candy. That may have been a bit. But you have to yeah. taste it to know. I gotta tell you, we you start researching like movie prop uh -huh. severed fingers, and we're like, do you want hair on the knuckle or not? Hair ah! on the knuckle? Which digit do you want? How long do you want the fingernail? How much cuticle? And, and um, <laughs> we trimmed? we couldn't afford it in general. Mm. And then the ending, like later on, where it's actually the prologue, mm. where it ends with the people from Betrayal at a yes. house on the hill mm -hmm. entering the house, mm. felt like a much better narrative so answer. Good. That was fantastic. Absolutely. Anyway, yeah. so I was like, okay, we can lose that. We're gonna just go. This is a better. It, the other one was just weird. Well, but talk now I about have getting chills <laughs> because yeah. now next time we play classic Betrayal at the House on the yeah. Hill. Yeah. Yeah. We have so much more behind, oh, you don't even know what happened there before you walked up. And it was so satisfying because I didn't see it coming, even though it's like, of course this is the puzzle piece that was missing. Right. It's just a brilliant narrative move that, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe some writer who plays this will catch it, but I just, <laughs> my mind was blown at how perfectly that leads us up to the present it day. Was, it was 2004. Right, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, okay, so we've talked about the Brooch of Rage and then the Binding, which James, you got to find a bunch of cult members. Uh, we found the Hungry Doll. That's the Doll. one you played. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I thought it was, but I didn't want to accidentally spoil the other one. Yeah, yeah. so in, in chapter two, a cult shows up and drops off the helm. So that's like the big thing for chapter two. Yeah, but I think it wasn't like overtly that they were a cult, right? Like they just like, we have gathered to- Well, we called them cultists. Yeah, we called, called them, them culty the, babies. The monsters are called cultists. Cultists, okay, yeah, that was. And there's a cult leader that you're trying to that's find. That's right, yeah. that's right. It's all coming back to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then Mary, we've talked about. Then was Be Our Guest, that which right. we talked about. A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. In this broadcast? Yes, yes. we did. Okay, yeah. yeah, we did. We talked about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've been talking about this game all day before cameras were rolling yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. yeah, the porcelain doll has nothing really to the story other than I found it creepy. Just when coming up with omens, it was uh, like, what's well, scary? Porcelain doll and 12 other things. Mm. Absolutely. Yeah. So then we had Gaze at the Abyss. Oh, yeah. Which is interesting. There's a haunt in the original one called The Abyss Gazes Back. So this is the prequel <gasps> to that haunt. Oh my God! Yeah. You're gonna give me goosebumps this whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. Wow. And this was yeah. the first time that we got introduced to the other world mechanic, right? Yes. Uh, yes. So yeah. what happens is, up till that chapter, Fenrir is gaining in strength. Yes. And he's just all the deaths and all the anger, and he's slowly getting stronger. And there's mentions that you know, like. You know, you're having visions of him with a capital H, and also the girl is still freaked out and hiding, but starting, you know, like time doesn't pass the same way for her. She's starting to get a little bit stronger. She's also the only one who just calls him Fenrir. Right, oh. and we she's see, like whatever, oh, like just call him Fenrir. Yeah. Him and him, and yeah. you don't you say his name, so it's yeah. scary, and you can't mention it, and like don't mention his name or here, and she's like whatever. Yeah, right. Fenny just boy. some wolf dude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, so then we were throwing things into a portal. I believe Esther, Esther was, and to be our guest, uh, we had to... no, after when you, that, um, so no, the same character starts in a bedroom and everyone else starts in the basement. Right, because yeah. then the cavern opens Yeah, up. this is where the chasm appears. Yeah. The chasm appears at yeah, the end of this yeah. chapter. I mean, you might have a different haunt, but you're gonna get a chasm. Mm -hmm. But we don't know that we can go in there yet, right? No, and it just ends, and it says like the chasm just goes down, and there's like right. laughter and light and madness uh. and stuff coming out, because there's a chasm in the original game. Right, yes, uh. in the basement. Yeah, and you created a bloody room for the dull one. Yes. Sure there's did. a bloody room in the original game, and that one, yeah. I looked at the original game, I go, it's not that bloody. I'm like, <laughs> and, then I, and then I gave the artist this one, and I was like, Wow! <laughs> wow! Like bloody. Yeah, Actually, it was. In the, no question. Yeah, that broom was. Yeah, that room the was bloody. <laughs> other haunt that you didn't get. If the traitor wins, the exit flavor text is one of the most horrific things that you will find Ooh. in that game. And oh, I won't say what it is God. on camera. Oh. I can tell you off camera in case you get. Like if the tra I remember I wrote it, and I was in front of a crackling wood fire, like living uh -huh. in New England, and I was like, do, 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 do. I think it was like five o'clock, and I had a glass of wine, and I got done. I was like. <laughs> I need a I need a bath. Yeah, I sent it to the sent it to the yeah. team, yeah. and I was like, "Hey, this is too much." And I was like, "What is wrong with you?" I was like, "Nothing. I'm having this like ho 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 quintessential yeah. Christmas yeah. moment," and I'm just like, "Blood and death." And yeah. Do you ever scare yourself in those moments? Do you ever like, oh, maybe I'll work later because you freak yourself out no. by yourself? No, it's all very abstract to me. Like I read it and go. That's weird and gross. <laughs> is that too weird and gross? Like, uh, then I'll read it the next day and go, "Whoa, what is wrong with me that my <laughs> brain could do say, that?" Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not creeped out by it. I'm sure. more like, just 
weird that my brain could come up with that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, like, yeah what's yeah. wrong with me? <laughs> well, because it's all just like a puzzle. So I was like, okay, so if in this one, all I'll say is you had one big doll. In the other one, you get lots of little. <gasps> right. Whoa, oh, no. And so I'm like, what would happen if a bunch of little dolls won? Oh, no. Uh, yeah, so and that's like, yeah, right. It's a puzzle to be solved. Like It's like they like, dress you up and travels, puppet you but, around. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How do you like it? <gasps> Smushy eyes. <laughs> yeah, your eyes are weirdly soft. <laughs> what, what was so cool, and, and hearing you talk about like the different paths that our, that our journey could have gone and what we ended up doing, it, is that like you talk about like, oh, I, I don't want people to go to sleep, like not able to sleep because of how scary it is. I would be, have restless sleep because I would want to know, well, what if we had solved this room? Or what if we had defeated this? Or what if whatever happened with this like unfound trail that we didn't quite complete in time or something like that? There are so many cool things that are there, and then you're saying there's entire storylines that we didn't even get to. Well, just on. little little bits of things. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. But still, it's still like um, like again, like our finish to the game was satisfying. It was like, whew, you know, like wow, we went through some stuff. But still, like I still ha you know, hold on to those like little things. Like like the now I want to go and find every time that uh, the girl, you know, tried to yeah. reach out to us and stuff yeah, like she's, that. And, yeah, she's the one who's on the cards. Like, yeah, oh, right. Yeah. Old pot. Like yeah. she's trying to be like, hey, hey people, yeah. Yeah. beware of this house. And then eventually she becomes the protagonist right. mm -hmm. who figures out he can't be harmed of this earth. And we mentioned meteorites. Yes. Yeah. It all yeah. led to, I yeah. mean, it's a little bit of Return of the King. Like, no man can kill me. Like, I'm not a man. And yeah. like, because yeah. we had the meteorite at the end because 1969 was about the moon landing and yep. out of space and aliens and we had a meteor I'm like that doesn't really fit mm. how does this fit how does it become his omen because it's from space and then we're mm. like wait a minute wait a minute can we do this can we do the it, yeah like, right, that works yeah it's yeah. unearthly right yeah. like he Absolutely. had he had spells against everything that he knew right and mm -hmm. could see and touch but he didn't have anything about from you know the heavens. from the heavens yeah, yeah. Oh. so is the bleak journal her journal no, it's oh. a, but she's in it. She sure, infects yeah, the game. Like yeah. she's sort of caught in, in the game. Right, right. Yeah. And so she's on some cards, and she's in the bleak journal, and she's trying to like communicate as this other voice. And it came out of actually, that cover mm -hmm. had the two girls like right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I remember saying to Wizards like, "That's really cool. Those girl, girl with the two reflections is front and center." And they're like, "Isn't she in the story?" in the game a lot, and we were like 80% done. I'm like, she is now. She will be. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and I'm really glad that they did, because I went back and I'm like, well, what's her story? And that really solidified sure. the family that came before. Yeah, yeah. And then like just writing in the margins in the book, and then that she's the one who tries to tell you after the house stops being a house and it's a sanitarium, and then she's the one like, do these things, get mm. ready, you have mm -hmm. to go back, because I need a reason why you were coming to the house after no one owned the house. Yeah. Right. And so it was more like the girl was on the radio and she drew us back here and she's trying to like, hey, you know, you trapped him in hell in chapter eight, but he's going to get out mm. and you need a better plan than your ancestors had, which was like, get him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Yeah. It, it felt right to have that ally that he's such a dark, Too powerful mind. force. Yeah. How do we as players that are trying to keep up, but we don't know everything about the lore of Fenrir. Yeah, right. So her, she was on our side and it made it feel like there was this balance in the world, yep. which was a nice choice. So you, I forget what your rule book had. Every time the, the heroes win, you check a box on the back. Yes. Mm -hmm. And depending on how many you check, you get two versions of the girl. Either you saved her or she comes out corrupted. Okay, oh. so one of the things we wanted to ask about is that- Should we saved her, right? As, mm -hmm. well, I don't, as her, her powers are similar. Uh -huh. Her description's different. I believe and her she powers are similar, but because I finished a painting as Lazarus, yes. and then it had me tick off the thirteenth uh, right. thing on the back. Yep. Did that have something to do with? Yeah. So each chapter, each chapter is a hand on the clock. Right. right? And so there is the thirteenth game is the last game, so you won't know if you won it or not. So we can have you check that off, and that just means you finished the painting. <laughs> so that was the only. Well, it means you finished the painting. And then every time the heroes won, and I think if it's seven out of the 13, uh -huh. if the heroes won one more than half. Uh -huh. Oh, uh, no, it's 12 because no one will win. See, this is all the stuff that's on <laughs> No one will win chapter seven because everyone's a traitor, so the heroes can't win. Uh -huh. So in only 12, it's possible to be checked. Sure. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so if the heroes won six, I think we give the round up. <laughs> then you get the good girl. And if they only won five yeah. and the traitor won, then you get the, it's not that she's bad, it's that she's broken. Right. Like she, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The all of the 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 traitor winning, like kind of affected her. I she think was we got the, the good. Around. You got the good one. We got yeah. The good one. Mm -hmm. And you didn't use her power enough in the final game. Kept forgetting. Oh, no. Yeah. 
Well, we didn't, yeah, you we, still won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you rolled, and you <laughs> rolled four dice, and you're like, you're I need for our play. <laughs> you know, I, I was. Spoilers. We were running out of footage. We had to get off <laughs> the stage, leave. and we said, James, we need you to win in this role. Yeah. He said, no problem, and he rolled like 13 <laughs> out of 14. No, you had, you had to dice. roll eight on four yeah. dice. And yeah, I was sitting here, and I was four. like, I have two monitors, and I was watching this, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I was looking, I'm like, what are the, I'm like, how many re-rolls, how many omens is he carrying? I'm doing the math, I'm like, he's got like a 30%. <laughs> oh my God, he did it on the first try, and I actually like backed yeah. up in my chair. Lost our mind. Yeah. yeah. And we, we were talking about, this is such a horrible thing to say, but because we didn't have the stage, we might have had to cheat the role. Yeah. We might have had to, yeah, yeah, just yeah, yeah. to make it. it work. And yeah. then the first time, yeah. you rolled yeah. it. <laughs> you rolled so a perfect it, yeah. I <laughs> reacted absolutely like I was watching a movie that I had nothing to do with when you rolled that. I was like, wait, what? Like, like yeah. some amazing catch, you know, in a football game yeah, or something. Yeah. And yeah. I wheeled back in my chair. Uh, my kids are like, whoa, what's, what's, what are you doing? What are you I'm do? like, uh, nothing. That was just, some guy rolled well. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, but how satisfying yeah. when the dice participate in the narrative. Yeah. 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 Better, right no way. better way to end the game. Yeah. No better yeah. way to end yeah. all like, of the Yeah, places. no problem. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, That's a Finn one in 81 chance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. He won the numbers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and then uh, he dissipates into dust. We dissipate into dust. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's. The house oh, always so wins. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So that's what we kept saying. Wins. The house yeah. always wins when yeah. the design team. Yep. Doesn't matter what you do, the house always wins. Doesn't matter if you're in Vegas or a, yeah. a haunting. On a haunted house. <laughs> and I know some people want to have like really multiple paths that you can take some yeah. of these legacy games. It's like I can't give you 14 games right, right. and let you on game three start to diverge because there would be thousands of endings at yeah. that point and yeah. there would be thousands of mediocre endings. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and, and it's interesting that you mentioned that because we talk a lot about the difference between survival horror and tragic horror. Of like, you go into survival horror thinking like, I can beat this game, I can win, and tragic horror has like, everyone's gonna die. Like, you know that, but let's make it a good story mm -hmm. up leading up to that. And it's interesting that that was the motto that like, the house always wins right. for that one. Although you can survive, see what Yeah, Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. But eventually. <laughs> let's talk about the inhabitants. Right, so the inhabitants came around because we're like, wait, this house isn't abandoned. People are living here. Mm. Mm. Isn't it like we need something for them to do? So we came up with the inhabitant system. And it was very early on, but not right away, that we're like, wait, there's a madman and a girl and a dog in the original game. We created a man and a woman and an animal. Uh, like, yeah. Yeah. wait, what? Like, it was more <laughs> like happy. So we introduced them. And then at some point, it became that the male inhabitant is the reincarnation of Tyr. Right. right, who keeps mm. being drawn back to the house. And if you look, every time it says, the first time you meet so-and-so, read this entry, uh -huh. everyone mentions that either his right hand or something off or that he's left-handed. I don't know that we mentioned in a recap of the lore, because we were talking about it earlier, that uh, his hand was bitten off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, Fenrir, like, the, the, myth, the myth, the actual Norse myth is that the real wolf bites yeah, off his hand. Mm -hmm. But it says on one of the, when you get to the end of a helm, you get some of the, like, past story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That Tyr fought him and lost a hand mm. in the process and then was cursed by Fenrir that their lives were bound together. Oh, man. I did not put that together. I remember us yeah. reading about the hand stuff and I was yeah, just like, the, more yeah. weird flavor text. Yeah, and the, that one had a meaning. Yeah, and the reason that he was a madman is in that version, he remembers all his lives and they're oh. all jumbled together oh, no. in his head like for a thousand years of different lifetimes and that's why he's the madman. It's raving, frothing madman is what you find in Betrayal. It's right. because it's, it's tear. It's a man who's just lived too many times. Yeah. And so there was that husband and wife I mentioned, the Vikings who thought Fenrir was okay, who kept right. them alive. Yeah. Yes. She left, she founded the cult. Oh! Because she had the helm right. yeah. and was biding her time and then she sensed that he was waking up, or not she, she was long dead, but the cult sensed that he was waking up and mm. sent some people back to be like, here, this will help. Uh. Right? We're gonna put this offering and this will help further bind the people who live here right. yeah. to our master below and they'll put stickers and worship it and, <laughs> and chant mm -hmm. and be very respectful, which will just accelerate his waking up process. So thank you for playing along. But yes. respect <laughs> the helm. As a result, because she did a like a human blood sacrifice and was a cannibal, uh -huh. um, the house draws women who are prone 
to be cannibals. So all of the female inhabitants are cannibals, <sighs> which are, is mentioned. Like there's the innkeeper who makes m meat pies that have like wedding uh, rings yes. in it. Yeah. And then Scorpio. Scorpion. Uh, we need, yeah, we got a little creative we with our. Yeah, and the nurse. Right. Mm -hmm. says, nurse like, Ratchet. Nurse Ratchet. We yeah, and then says like, um, she goes home and eats like steaks every night, and you eat mystery. Yeah. And then it says, while you yeah. sit here and yeah. eat mystery meat, that she's oh. actually bringing humans in and ah, serving yeah, it to right. the ah. the people. <laughs> to the yeah. To it's the making inmate. it worse. What is, what is the item that is a spoon? The um, marrow spoon. Yeah. The malt yes. marrow spoon. Yeah. Yeah. Or the the flea kit. The, oh, yeah. 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 There was yeah. some weird stuff in the 19th century. These are yeah. real items. Sure. Yeah. yeah. The we had some of them. People thought would help. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's be glad we're alive now. Actually, I want to talk about everybody's um, favorite haunts, or maybe one we've mentioned, maybe one we haven't yet. But for me, anything to having to do with the sanitarium mm. is very terrifying. Mm. And th I think that was my favorite. Uh, let's see. Do no harm. Do no harm. And I believe. And then Shaga. Uh, in, oh, mm. in, oh, Shaga. Shaga. The mouth one. Yeah. So, uh, do no harm. James was super evil. Uh, we were that was poisoning. the sanatorium. You were all dead. We, all right. We all dead. So that, that's all the portrait. The thing about the thing about the portrait. Sorry. No, go, go ahead. Please. Uh, the, the portrait is whenever you get a haunt with a portrait, is reality is not what it seems. So it's always a type oh. of thing like, oh, you're already dead. Oh. So when like when you get one of those, it's going to be something that there's another one in that same chapter. I'll talk about off camera if you mm. like that. I absolutely love mm. when people get it. Um, so that was the nature is that's the one where, oh, by the way, you were a doctor doing experiments. They're already right. dead and you mm. start the haunt like you're a ghost now. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And you're it, trying to cover up the evidence. Yeah. And hide the bodies. Yeah. That was a cool uh, like flip on it because we'd been playing with the ghost mechanic for so long that we actually got to be the ghosts yeah. this time. And we were like, yeah, it, it was cool. See and I was like Pac-Man. Right. Um, um, yeah, I can't you remember had to if you won or I think you absorbed the power from our oh, bodies. Oh, I won. Yeah, I think you yeah. got to I throw everybody's the body in, in like the pond or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so the, the haunt count was J7, James 2, Xander and I won each. <laughs> uh, and But you you were usually victorious. I won a lot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it didn't matter which team you were on. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, whatever the yeah. thing is, I'll kill it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> it was all a lead up to rolling the, that yeah. eight on the Yeah, it was. Everybody who's saw the, the last episode because we were doing a recap. It was just like, everybody was like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you wait? Why did, and I'm just like, <laughs> whatever. Because yeah. we were out of footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They told me yeah. too. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think mine was the alien one, building the tower to mm, contact the aliens. Because cool. that was more like pulp. That's what I like, like yeah. campy pulp horror. Yeah. So there's a D&D &D reference in there, which oh. none of you got. Oh, no. The thing that you're using to raise up the tower are 10-foot poles, Ten which, oh. is, which is a trope from first edition. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh. Right, right. I just, yeah, I didn't think yeah, about like that. Yeah, like we're all, yeah. I was like just. Fifth editors. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know. <laughs> I play fifth edition. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I like the tinfoil hats. Those the are tin, Oh, yeah, we had. Oh, we did yeah, go all out with our yeah. hat production. That's yeah. true. At the beginning of that chapter, the person who's the narrator is like, whoa, man, thanks for coming. Yeah. And he named some stuff that he put around the house. Yeah. All of them are relevant in the different haunts. <gasps> he mentions like three things in. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've got this array. I got and this, I've got this array, array, and I've got this array, and so like, yeah. no matter which haunt you play, it sounds like this person really knew what was happening. Yeah, yeah. the doomsday oh. prepper was right. Ooh. And then what happens is you remember the one he mentioned, and you forget that there were two others that right. weren't mentioned, right. and you don't even think about it. I think we may have said, maybe I'm just giving us too much credit, but we were like, oh, I bet those are the other haunts that oh, we didn't yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At we this were point, we were commenting. Yeah, yeah, commenting. Yeah. In it, <laughs> you're in from, it from afar. You were seeing the yeah. Matrix. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Shagoth was very cool though. That this was really giant mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what is the lore behind Shagoth? I don't know. Of it's it. a Lovecraftian <coughs> monster. Right? Yeah. So it's the 1920s. Yeah. And there's an insane asylum. So uh -huh. we, it, you, you just hit Cthulhu. Right. Lovecraft yes. horrors, no matter what we do there, and that explains why the original game you can't go to the basement <laughs> because at the start of that. They board you in the basement yeah. so they can do their ritual and they yeah. nail it shut. And that explains why there's no passage to the basement in the original game is right. because the uh, cultists buried people in there right. Unless you find to the do their shoot. stuff. And then you have to find or, yeah. your way out. So at the beginning, yeah. it like start, it's a little bit different because you're in the basement and you can't get anywhere. So right. it's just this escape at the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And that's a hidden traitor one. That's right. Yeah. Every yeah. everyone every one in that chapter is a hidden traitor. Yeah. Because it's about like the enemy within and cultists. Mm -hmm. And whenever you get the Chris. 
you get a Cthulhu-esque haunt with a hidden traitor. Like, it's ah. all about who's the real cultist. Sure. Right. Uh -huh. So I was trying to persuade you guys to give me your, your debris. That's right. So That's you right. eat yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And then you did. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Did do it. yeah. Uh, I, think, I think you tried, but you did a misdirection. You were like, I'll get Becca on my side by giving her all my debris as she goes Something to like, yeah. Shepherd. Yeah. And yeah. you actually gave it all to me and Something then we like won. That. You, you yeah. did a long con in a, in a medium did game. not win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. <laughs> this will pay off. At what, it's over. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was pretty surprised by that. <laughs> so throughout all this, we have the option: should we want you to go to the other worlds, which we know will be more helpful later, but it seems to be very painful when we go there without many items. Mm. How did the mechanic of the other worlds come about? It went around and around, and we probably made them a teeny bit too hard. We wanted you to be frightened. Yeah. So when you had to go in there, you're like, oh, no, okay, here we go. Yeah. Rough. But we also they, yeah, there's some really good stuff down there. Yeah, yeah. But you have to really prep for it and find it and go and I think most people are too busy like running around not dying to, yeah. Yeah, yeah. to prep for it but we were so concerned that people would break it by going down there and getting good stuff and then breaking the haunts that we wanted to make it hard to do and it's very hard to do. I remember that was my strategy when it first appeared. I was like, I'm going to go down there right away and get whatever's good. And then it was not good. Yeah. 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 That's what everyone does in the first one. Like, let's see what these are. Yeah. I do not yeah. like this. Oh, and yeah. usually what happens is the first person goes down, the yeah. second person goes down, and then the third or fourth people like wander off and start exploring. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. Guys, um, it's not good. It's not, not good. good. Yeah. It's not fun, don't that, do that, that one changed yeah. quite a bit. Originally, it was going to be like another region that you built normally from a tile pile with like the nine different realms Ooh, that, but they were pentagonal enough. shaped sure oh. like um the original character cards and yeah, yeah. And so they went together at weird angles and table space was a problem yeah and it never quite went together well and so eventually it just became a deck of cards that you sort of like went through and and went up and it was going to have like different art in there but then that got in the way and so like it it also worked. I like the flavor text on there. It's just weird. The yeah. lands were they? Are they based off of anything? Yeah, each land is based off one of the nine lands oh, of okay. the myth of the. Yeah, nine, eight or nine, because uh -huh. one is Earth. Sure. Yeah. So I think eight it's the eight other realms like fire and ice. Oh. And in the original one, whoever dies first in the witch hunt goes down uh -huh. and actually meets Fenrir. It says your spirit goes down and descends through oh, a land yeah. of fire, yeah. a land yeah, of ice, yeah. past rainbows. Through a forest, it's all of the eight oh. realms of mythology until you get to a realm of darkness. Because it was yes. so early on, we hadn't really discovered the mythology. I remember thinking like, "Oh, was that circles of hell, and this is the devil?" Mm -hmm. Like that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Most people don't. One person got it, and then when they met the berserker in the next one, they're like, "I knew it was a Viking thing in the last uh -huh. one." Like they were yeah. right on top sure of it. Sure, you did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I. Victor's creature is a cool one. That, yeah. A uh, cool, yes. interesting use of the other worlds as a happy place yeah. where mm -hmm. a monster can live on. Was that sort of seeing which ways you could flip it on its head? Like, this is a place where you hide the bad thing, but also just the misunderstood monster. Yeah, the, the haunt team just sort of presented that. When we knew we wanted to do a Frankenstein, like we would say like, okay, what's the, it was the apothecary kit. So yeah. these have to do around science and experiments in nature. And we're like, well, this is a perfect time for Frankenstein. So we knew we would do a Frankenstein one, and then they just came up with almost this tragic love story mm -hmm. yeah, of Victor yeah. and his creature wanting yeah, to just yeah. escape persecution and go live someplace where they wouldn't be harassed by people. Yeah. yeah. That, for that one, it was interesting. The outside world is the enemy. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. for, for that one. Yeah, and the outside cool. world, and right. um, that chapter is the first time that you meet the other worlds. So right. every haunt will make sure that you go in them yeah. to win so that you learn the mechanics and explore yeah. them. So in yeah. yours, you had to go find a land for him to live in and protect against the townsfolk yeah. mm -hmm. who, had it, who had it out for him. Wow. Um, what was your favorite part of the experience, having made two other legacy games before? Um, and how did it differ from I, those? I really liked revisiting Betrayal. Mm. It was because I had worked on it early in my career, and so I was yeah. like, oh, hey, it's like kind of going back home to do something. And then it wasn't just me. There was, like I said, at any one time, there was between like three and seven people working on it so we could kind of divide. But I just loved, you'd work on mechanisms for a while. Then you get to write like weird cards. Mm. And then you'd come up with tiles. Yeah. Then you'd come up with haunts. Like there's just so many things. And then you come up with a story to put it together. And then you just keep revisiting. I mean, I solo played all of the campaign haunts. Oh, like wow. Five times, okay, three players, okay, four players, okay, five players. Sure. Okay, haunt starts early, okay, haunt starts late. Like trying to make sure that, you know, is this fun, is this easy to understand? I know some people would be like, did anyone read the rules? Did they try? Like, we tried. If we didn't get it right, <laughs> yeah. it was not for lack of trying. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but I, mean, I, I for one, just going through the experience, was, was marveling at how well everything fit together and how seamless it could be, uh, knowing that there were so many other parts and so many different ways it could branch mm, out. Yeah. And I was like, this is masterful. And the, the, the gimmicks that you had in it, like discovering the helm or the secret uh, minis that were mm -hmm. for later, and like, there was, it was like this was a magic box that I wanted to trigger something to have something else happen. Mm -hmm. And it kept that way the whole playthrough for me. And that's what we were trying to do is, okay, people are, people are fighting over the deed. Right. That's cool. Let's just get rid of it. Yeah. 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 Like, that thing? That's yeah. yesterday's. And it's like we wanted yeah. to when it got to the 20th century. Like the sanitarium starts in 1901. Right. So it's like the end of candlelight and the beginning of electricity. Like it started to feel like the beginning of the modern era. Like if you look at... 1901 compared to like 1870. So many things like electricity mm, so and cars and yeah, telephones. Yeah. And so we wanted the game to have a natural break too. So you felt like this was ancient days and this is the beginning of modern time. So yeah. new characters, no one owns the house. Like we wanted this real big break so that you were yeah. in your head, you weren't playing in this Victorian house anymore. You were playing in the modern world. And so yeah. we wanted to yeah. move as many things as we could at once so you would forget you would see the same tiles in a different way. Sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Felt that, yeah. Because Felt it does that. need to evolve and continue to change to have this sort of progression that right. you, you really captured so well. And there is this thing of looking back at history, time has exponentially sped up in, yeah. in our progress as society, yeah. and we feel that in the game. James, yeah. did you ever get to say your favorite element yeah. of a haunt? Oh, um, well, yeah, gosh. Have there we was... talked about? <laughs> Um, I, I, my favorite haunt for that we played was the the one where we were all running around trying to plant evidence. Oh, yes, yeah. that yeah. was um, um, her beating heart. Her beating yeah. heart, yeah. And and I just I thought that that was so cool and so fun that um, you know we were all rushing to the same places and chasing each other like oh oh I'm gonna put down this evidence oh you're yeah. gonna go break that evidence and you're gonna plant one of mine yeah. whoa 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 so it, it kind of kind of Benny Hilled a little bit <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but there was yeah. still real stakes because we didn't want to get caught we wanted to survive yeah. we wanted to win to, yeah. to find out what the next thing that happens in this story but we were all still just running around and, and planting and fabricating evidence and it was just like this really and again that the the danger was from outside because the inspector we didn't want to get caught. That right. was the danger. It wasn't. You're all bad guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But that was the one where you're all bad guys. And yeah. the flavor text on that is 100% from uh, the Telltale Heart. Is it's it? Awesome. Okay. Oh. We, weren't, we weren't sure if it was. No, we took the. Yeah. I took the Telltale Heart. Yeah. And then just tweaked it enough, so okay. like yeah. shortened it, and it, but it was like all the words and in the Lovecraft ones, mm -hmm. almost all of the flavor text is Lovecraft. Just mushed together. Sure. Oh, like we actually, because yeah. I double check, like this is public domain, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. And I'm like, this is public domain. Okay, yeah, cool. And yeah. so like I'm gonna, you know, take this and take that and rewrite it. So yeah, the her beating heart is just the telltale heart. Yeah. Um, text is written around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Huh. Yeah, the heart beats under the floorboards. Yeah. That was one I yeah. read yeah. that was formative in high school. Sure. Um, uh, well, we find the wedding veil of murder is what it's I meant. Always, was the element that you yeah. added. That we have it where that. it's it's a wedding and, and it says, like, uh, never worn, right? To right. play off that yeah. thing yeah. that yeah. Hemingway Maybe didn't actually worn. write, but everyone attributes to him. Yeah. <laughs> so it's um, never worn, and, and it's late 19th century, so it all should just be this gothic woe and blackness and bleakness, and so a wedding canceled. Right. And the bride is found dead. So in the one you played, one of you murdered her. Actually, it says you're all responsible for her death in your own way, but it right. doesn't matter. You're not going to get caught. Yeah. If you want to say you're all guilty of something. You decide what. But, yeah. the, but it doesn't matter. It's who sure. goes to jail. Yeah, yeah. That right. matters. Lazarus went to jail. <laughs> he went to jail. He didn't die. He went to jail. Yeah. He did. And then yeah. he got trapped in hell on the next yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then came back at the end. Spoilers. Absolutely. I had a quick question, though, too. You had mentioned this earlier. Was it your idea to destroy cards physically in the game? Well, I've that, never seen that before. That, that's in all legacy games. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> it's a way of just being like, nope. Yeah. And it's hard to do. It is. It, it adds horror to the horror. Yeah. 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 Rip this for some people is very cathartic, and I know not everyone does it. Yeah, oh, sure. But we tell people like, really, they know. look, if you just keep every single card in here, we have never tested that. We have no idea if it's unplayable or a mess, or if you're going to trigger haunts like on the like we just don't know. Mm. Yeah. So we hope you destroy them because it's also supposed to be like things are ending, things yeah, are, mm -hmm. things are going. Yeah, one one time play. Yeah. yeah, and then many fo wow. free plays. And then you free play. Actually, that's the thing that I really like at the very end. One of the things that the trick that we pulled is when little by little you don't even notice. And then we have you destroy a few things. 
If you gave your copy of A Trail Legacy to someone else, they would find zero reference of Fenrir, <gasps> the wolf, or the helm, or anything. That entire story is gone Whoa. in free play. Wow. Oh, wow. So when you go to a haunt in the campaign, you go to the Bleak Journal first. Right. right. Yeah. Then you go to the entry in the book. Oh. Every, and you destroy the Bleak Journal at the end. The right. helm is destroyed when you played. Right. The starting cards that mention him are Whoa. all torn up along the way. So if you gave it to someone, you'd be like, what was the story before this? No, they are walking into the haunted house and they yeah. have no idea, just like yeah. right. you don't in the original game. Like yeah. the, we, we had wow. to say, like, never mention the helm in the haunt books. Because yeah. it's not going to be there. Wow. So you would still find it in the rule book. Sure. Like how to use the helm or right. how to use a couple things in there. Yeah. But the, the pieces are gone. There's not any writing. There's no cards that mention it. It's just entirely scrubbed. And you have an abandoned house. Left wondering if it ever happened. Yeah. Now. yeah. Wow. And we should mention to our audience, it's just like this video. Once you've watched it once, it will be gone forever. <laughs> You'll never be able to see it again. No, you can hit replay. You can okay. watch this a bunch yeah. of times. What's going on? <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank coming you. here, describing your incredible game. That Thanks we for loved having our play me. Yeah. So Thank much. Thank you for playing Rob. it. I enjoyed watching oh, it. Oh, good. The, the, the design team would talk when the next one was up. <laughs> like, oh, they have another episode up, and we'd all watch it. That is oh, so, so cool. Wow. Thank you and so much. And then we'd say, here's all the rules they played wrong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about oh, that. We've already sure, edited man. that comment out of this video. No, the spreadsheet guys. No one plays the games 100% by the rules. Sure. Absolutely. House yeah, rules. Games, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Especially in a game about a house. You did a wonderful job. It was fun to watch. I liked hearing it. I got to know your characters. I got to know your personalities. And now I'm here sitting on a couch with you. Oh, I know. And everyone gets to meet yours. Rob Davio, everyone. Thank you. Yay. Thanks to Jay Africa, Xander Genere, and James Katica. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.